Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name is David and this is how to look after your playing cards. All right, so how do you take care of your playing cards? You maybe have started your new deck collection or uh, you've had a deck collection for a really long time and you wanna know, well, how do I take care of my cards the best way? Like I want my cards to last, I want them to be around for generations, I want them to pass them on to my grandchildren. David taught me how to do that. All right, so listen up. Uh, cards are made out of paper, <laughs> okay? Cards are made out of paper. Uh, usually it's uh, three different layers. So you have the back and the front and they're held together with glue, okay? And that's why you can ding the corner and then peel them apart. So there's three different layers to each card, but like I said, it's just paper. It's just paper. And so uh, you have paper cards in a paper box. And so the same rules that would apply to taking care of any paper product or preserving paper goods is gonna apply to cards. Like I also collect comic books, all right? And you learn how to take care of your comic books when you collect comics, or maybe you used to collect sports cards when you were younger, like maybe you collected football cards or baseball cards. There's rules, right? There's, like you don't just take loose football cards and wrap over band around them. That's not the best way to keep them preserved. So I just wanna go over a couple of tips that will help you get the most out of your cards, all right? First off, temperature is huge. Temperature is huge, okay? So don't leave them in the car, all right? And don't leave them in your garage. Don't leave them outside. Don't leave them outside overnight, okay? That is a surefire way to come back and find your cards warped, all right? Just be really wary of temperature, and that goes along with how you store them or where you keep them, okay? I don't store my comic books in the garage. I don't store them in the attic. You shouldn't store your cards in the garage, okay? Your cards should be in a cool, dry place. I put mine in their boxes, and then I keep them in a card box that kind of pushes them all together so they stay flat against one another. In other words, they're not loose going around, you know, they're, they're tight in their box, and then I stack all the boxes next to each other, and those boxes also keep themselves tight. So that kind of keeps the cards in their format, you know, it keeps them in their position, it keeps them looking like decks. They're not just all scattered and loose and wobbly and back and forth. It's paper, again, okay? How would you treat paper if you wanted to keep it all straight and all perfect? You keep it in a cool, dry place, you keep it nice and tight. I keep my card boxes in more cardboard. So like, it's also paper, it's paper in paper, okay? And that makes sure that the, all the cards can breathe, okay? And that they stay cool and they're, they're low to the ground. I don't keep my cards high up on the top shelf where the air conditioning turns really hot. I keep them down low to the ground where it's the coolest in the house, okay? So my, my cards are in cardboard boxes, in long boxes, same kind of boxes you would put baseball cards in or football cards, and I keep them at the bottom of my closet, really low to the ground. Second, keep your cards clean, okay? Paper gets dirty. Paper gets dirty really fast, okay? Especially if you just ate food, or you just woke up, or you know, whatever it is. So wash your hands and clean your hands. Keep your nails trimmed, be careful, of your hands, okay? Your hands are coming into contact with your cards more than anything else. So you wanna have clean hands, you wanna have your nails trimmed down, okay? Because you know when you're doing flourishing, you're gonna poke and stab your cards and that's gonna make little dents. And all those little dents are gonna prevent the cards from gliding and moving the way you want them to. You wanna keep all the dirt, even if, I know you're thinking, my hands aren't, aren't dirty. It's microscopic, okay? It's so microscopic you can't even see it. The tiniest little flakes of dirt and things that just rub off your hands are gonna attract themselves and stick to the paper. It's gonna slow the process down, they're gonna grind against each other, and then they're gonna start clumping up, okay? And you've seen decks that clump up. Decks that clump up are dirty, or they've been exposed to some sort of weird temperature, okay? So you wanna keep your hands clean as well. Another thing that gets your cards dirty is when you drop them, okay? Even if you drop them on the carpet, you could drop them outside in the dirt, that's okay, but even if you drop them on the carpet and the carpet's just been vacuumed, it doesn't matter. Those few seconds that they were down there in the carpet, they were attracting lint, cat hair, old pieces of granola, like, you know, it's, it's down there, okay? And the, it's gonna stick to the paper. So let's say you dropped your cards, okay? And you pick them up very carefully. Don't jam them, okay? Pick them up very carefully because there's probably dirt stuck in there. And just, just spring them, okay? You can spring them and blow out the dirt spring them in front of your fan a couple times, just get all those loose particles out. And the better you can spring them, 
far apart, get them all wide apart, okay? Run air through them and shove all those dirt particles out. Another thing you can do is just recycle your decks, okay? If you have one favorite deck that you go to over and over and over again, that deck is never gonna relax. Paper needs to relax, okay, in order for it to retain its shape. So you should have five or seven decks of cards that are your favorite and just run through them in rotation. Have a Sunday deck, a Monday deck, a Tuesday deck like that. And just, it, it'll make them last longer, it'll keep them cleaner. The longer you can keep them in their box in a cool, dry place, the more they'll be able to spring back and relax and take their shape again, okay? If you use the same deck over and over and over again, it's just gonna wear out faster and you'll be going through cards quickly. So that said, what kind of cards should you use, okay? People always ask me, what's the best deck of cards for Magic? That's not even a question, is it? What's the best deck of cards for Magic? What are you doing? Like, they're just, it's just paper, okay? Every deck of cards is good for Magic. Every deck of cards is good for Magic, all right? It's the, <laughs> flourishing, flourishing is a little different because flourishing and cardistry, you kind of rely on color and you want uh, decks that ha are beautiful and pretty to look at. And also it's nice to have the decks that have the smoother edges and the more rounded corners. I, I think flourishers and, and cardistry people, they kind of look for that. But magic, you can do magic with the cheapest deck of cards or the most expensive deck of cards. It doesn't matter. It's not, you're not driving a car, okay? You're not comparing Ferraris to Toyotas and saying which card goes faster. They're cards, they're made out of paper, okay? Use any deck of cards for magic. But my advice would just be use bicycle. Use bicycle rider backs off the shelf. People always ask, what's the best deck of cards to use? What do I use? I use red bikes because they're readily available. You can get them anywhere and they're cheap. These are, again, these are paper products, okay? So they're gonna wear out over time. Eventually, they're gonna crumble apart and, and fail you and they're gonna be, you're gonna throw, throw them away. So what do you wanna do and practice with? A deck that's $12 or a deck that's $3, okay? They're made by the same company. They're made on the same paper. So to use designer decks for magic, or to use designer decks to practice with, it doesn't make as much sense. You should really practice uh, on decks that are affordable, okay? Because you're gonna go through them quicker. The same with cardistry. You should practice on affordable decks. So I say, get bicycle cards, get whatever's readily available at your local grocery store. You know, the bottom line is, the more cards get used, the more they get thrashed. So no matter how well you take care of them, they're gonna get thrashed. Springs, shuffles, those break down the paper every single time you do it. Even though it looks like it snaps back and it handles great, you're still breaking the paper down every single time you do a shuffle or a spring, okay? You just are. You're breaking them down microscopically, but they're being broken down over time. So that means you'll just need to replace your cards more often. And if you're going through decks of cards and they're $12, $15 a piece, it just makes so much more sense to go through decks of cards that are $3 a piece, all right? It just does. It's just, it's just common sense. Plus, whenever you go to show somebody a magic trick and you have a designer deck, as opposed to a $3 rider back deck, you just don't want to have people be suspicious of your deck, okay? You want people to look at it and say, yep, that is a normal deck of cards that I could buy in any store, okay? So that's just my two cents on what's the best deck of cards for magic. All right, so keep your decks in a cool, dry place, okay? Clean your hands, cut your fingernails, and always use cards that are affordable, okay? Use cards that are cheap and that you can buy again and again and again so that you can get better and better and better and so you don't wear out and destroy your good cards, all right? All right, so as always, recommend that you like this video just so other people can find it faster. We also recommend that you subscribe to this channel just to stay up to date on the latest in cards and card magic. You wanna follow me on social media? You can. I'm at facebook.com slash magic orthodoxy, twitter.com slash magic orthodoxy, instagram.com slash magic underscore orthodoxy. And if you need more content, you can always find it at magic orthodoxy.com. Thanks, bye.